what a data. Good morning. We'll just get wait a couple of minutes for everyone to join. Good morning. We'll be starting shortly. We'll just give it one more minute and then we'll get started. Well, good morning. Very good morning. Welcome to our webinar this morning. I'm Pauline Vallow, the delivery manager for the technical support team here in RAP. The aim of this session is to introduce and walk you through our newly published sustainable procurement guidance on market engagement. RAP, the Waste and Resource Action Programme is a climate action NGO working around the globe to tackle the causes of the climate crisis and give the planet a sustainable future. For those who aren't familiar with RAP, it's likely that you are familiar with our work. RAP works with governments, businesses, and communities to deliver practical solutions to improve resource efficiency around the world. Part of our work here in Wales, funded by the Welsh Government, is to support the Welsh public sector to embed sustainable and low carbon principles into procurement strategies and activities. We can offer strategic support for policy development and planning, we can offer a review of your sustainable procurement capability, which can help identify actions for improvement. We can also provide support on individual procurement exercises. As a purchaser, your ability to define and successfully source products and services in a sustainable and circular manner is dependent on your awareness and knowledge of the supplier base and their capabilities, capacity and available technologies. Market engagement is therefore, a fun, is therefore a fundamental tool to aid that understanding. It's also essential to furthering the transition from a linear to a circular economy. Low carbon sustainable procurement is identified as a key lever in many Welsh government policies and strategies and will play a critical role in achieving net zero ambitions. The guide was developed in alignment with the legislative policy and organisational drivers that impact procurement decisions here in Wales. The Welsh Government's Beyond Recycling Strategy, which sets out the goals for Wales to become zero waste by 2050, reduce emissions, realise Wales' economic potential through circularity and make resource efficiency part of our Welsh culture. The strategy sets out ambitions to go beyond a focus just on recycling and move towards a more circular economy. The public sector and public procurement are identified as key levers for this transition. The adoption of sustainable procurement practices also aligns with the Welsh procurement policy statement that Welsh public bodies are expected to support policy objectives related to progressive procurement including both a foundational and circular economy, and are expected to progress long-term sustainable procurement practices. The Social Partnerships and Sustainable Procurement Bill sets out an overarching duty on contracting authorities to seek to improve the social, economic, environmental and cultural well-being of their areas by carrying out public procurement in a socially responsible way, placing fair work, decarbonisation and well-being at the heart of procurement. And of course, sustainable procurement offers a way for public sector bodies to maximise their contributions to the Wellbeing of Future Generation Act goals. The Welsh Government has set an ambitious goal for the public sector to achieve carbon neutrality by 2030, 
using Welsh public sector purchasing power to its maximum effect to source new, innovative, low carbon supply solutions will help achieve this goal. Dialogue with the market can directly support commitments to carbon emissions reductions, particularly through helping to define and target scope three emissions. Greater market engagement forms an important part of the UK government's efforts to reform the procurement process and aims to increase time spent on activities that add value to the procurement process, both pre-tender and post-tender, and decrease the time spent on process-driven activities. Welsh Procurement Policy Note WPPN 0721 concerning decarbonisation in procurement builds on the principles within the 2012 Opening Doors Charter for SME-friendly procurement and reinforces that by engaging with the market, purchasers can set out their requirements, understand the knowledge, capabilities and concerns of potential buyers and ensure SME, voluntary, community and social enterprise bidders are not disadvantaged. Whilst value for money remains a strategic organisational priority, and never more so in the current climate, it's worth noting the ways in which value can be achieved if circular procurement is adopted. For instance, reducing the need to purchase, extending the life of products in service, leasing or hiring products instead of purchasing, removing costs associated with waste to landfill, and recovering value for assets at end of life. I'd now like to hand over to my colleague, Hugh Lloyd, to take you through the next few slides. Yeah, thank you for that, Pauline. My name is Hugh Lloyd, um, and I'm a business cap manager with uh, RAP uh, Kimberley. So um, I thought I'd start today with what the definition of market engagement is, and I was going to use the one uh, that the Crown Commercial used. So Crown Commercial say, early market engagement, also known as soft market testing, is the process of engaging with potential suppliers before you begin buying goods and services for your organization. It gives suppliers the opportunity to both inform the specification and to get ready to meet the demand. Taking the time to carry out early market engagement and gather market intelligence is regarded as best practice and recommended as part of the preparation process for any future contract, especially where procurement are complex and or significant value. So why should you talk to suppliers before you buy? Well, early market engagement enables you to ask suppliers questions on important issues or decisions which will help you to refine your requirement. It helps you gain a better understanding from the market about what is possible. And for example, what resources such as staff, products or equipment would be needed to fulfill a contract. Early market engagement also increases awareness and interest in your potential procurement and encourages competition, meaning that you have more than one supplier, products or services to choose from when you're ready to tender. So if you could go on to the next slide, please. Okay, so these are the two kind of categories that are in the guidance, uh, which we're discussing today. One of them is very much a, a kind of short term immediate one. And the other one is the market development covers the, the whole spectrum of the procurement process. So to me, it's a bit like buying a car. I mean, none of us, uh, when their car breaks down, just goes to the nearest uh, showroom, just buys whatever is there. And then that's it. You know, we all have, um, depending on strategic value, the importance, the amount of purchase, we need to be building more time in for the pre-procurement and the market research in buying these things, which I think in our experience in public sector uh, procurement is something which is very reactive in the past and we need to be far more proactive. So what you're doing is you're looking at the talent within your supply chain to really try and deliver the things that Pauline mentioned before. So a market dialogue, this is very much the front end uh, immediate market research that you're doing. It is about open and transparency, discussing the problem and possible solutions. It's about enabling clearer requirements to be included in your specification and business casing. It's there to encourage competition and ensure a good number of applications. It's primarily there to understand how you need to construct the contract, how much it was going to cost and how long it's going to take. Is there to explore opportunities for delivering aspects such as innovation, social value, or carbon net zero, and also there to really identify who your potential suppliers are going to be and explore uh, barriers that they might encounter for new entrants and help structure the procurement itself, understand the risk and opportunities, and build awareness of the latest products, services, and innovations. 
Now, the market development is over a longer time span. The market development is there to share intentions with the market, giving potential bidders time to plan and prepare. It's there to enable the market to collaborate between themselves. So it could be more than one supplier um, providing you with the answers, but it gives them an opportunity to work together. It's there to explore new alternative ways of meeting the requirements and build relationships with suppliers and identify potential future solutions. And as I said before, identify the barriers or obstacles for the desired outcome. It's to rethink and reduce the need to procure, ideally, and moving to a more service provision, possibly. So you could look at maybe the finance side of it in terms of value, um, sorry, the uh, uh, higher purchase, leasing, take back. But as a supplier also, understanding what the life cycle costs are and what value can add to that and ensure that the future procurement remains feasible, transparent and competitive. Now, I was a relationship manager once and also this issue of transparency and competitiveness is really important because I think all the suppliers I dealt with said they don't want any surprises when it comes to being an, uh, a supplier for a company. So there should be that kind of uh, predictiveness in the relationship as well. So if I go to page 80, please. So in understanding the, the market engagement, you know, we have to talk about the different kind of market engagements and also the different categories. To me, this is something that I would be inclined to use, though, maybe the Kralich model. So you have your different categories, you have the importance and the impact of whatever you're procuring, and you talk about the risk as well and the amount of spend. So it could be very different depending whether you're buying pens for an organization or something which is strategically important as to how much early market engagement that you would actually do. If you're a supplier of stationary pens could be quite important, but if you're talking about a normal business, then this isn't something that you're going to be spending too much time on, but it gives you an opportunity to really reflect and understand the uh, effort that you have to put into early market engagement as well. So if I go to page nine, please, slide nine. So these are the mechanics, I suppose, of pre-market pretender market engagement. These are the things that you could consider in actually reaching out and speaking to potential suppliers and future suppliers as well. I mean, these are the obvious ones that you might think in terms of procurement, but of course, you know, there are also the ones that you also uh, have, such as using the internet, you have your own informal network, you could have the, your own kind of uh, database of suppliers as well. So you can talk about the trade shows, the pretender briefing, Meet the buyer events. I'm going to one tomorrow, which is with uh, the NHS. And it, there's a variety of things that you can do depending on the product, depending on the market, depends on the competition. But you can reach out and speak to these people and start engaging with them. So if I go to slide 10, please. Now, I wanted to talk about what other support services are out there. And in organizing meet the buyer events, then we have in Wales, uh, Business Wales, who can help you organize these things and they work with Sell to Wales as well. So this comes from a previous uh, project that I dealt with, uh, with a, a public sector procurement, and this was in Carmarthen. So what Business Wales did, they actually helped set up the virtual Meet the Buyer event. They have a database of suitable companies, such as um, the ones in the locality, because it's very much a local bias for this initial procurement exercise. They also talked about these quick quotes, which is a second point there. And quick quotes is a part of the sell to Wales portal. And what it allows them to do is any supply can register on this. And it is one where they are, um, it opens the doors to other public sector procurement activity as well. So it's very good in terms of maybe opening doors to other procurement opportunities which come their way as well. Also in dealing with business worlds, they can help you with things such as uh, maybe a sustainability kind of um, policy and things like that, which enable you to overcome those barriers that we talked before uh, in small companies or even any kind of company in applying for particular procurement opportunities. So, uh, sorry, I put something which has flushed up on my screen then. So they can really help you through the whole process then, and uh, I would get in touch with them. That's their number on the bottom there, if you want to get in touch with them or look at their website as well, please. 
So if you go to the next slide, please. So this one is a really easy one. I think from my perspective, the whole idea of pre-market engagement is really looking to your supplier network as a resource and looking what skills, what talent, and what they can offer you and really looking at nurturing them and really engaging with, with them at the earliest opportunity to really understand fully what they can do for you. Not, being do, not doing everything yourself, but really delving into your network and seeing what you can extract from them. And also it's in their um, interest as well to be able to be a valued partner in your supplier network. So the next slide, please. So this is the important one. This is the traditional versus the new way of procurement in terms of the time um, that you have to invest in the relationship. Now, the green dotted line is one which I think we have probably uh, are more um, familiar with in terms of you know, not doing an awful lot much in terms of market research. A lot of the activity is in the procurement process itself and then it tails off. What we're saying is an early market engagement that you need to invest much more upfront. And this is the way that you can really um, interact with the market and provide better guidance for potential suppliers and insight for the procurer. So it leads to better working relationships to the stakeholders and an optimal solution for yourselves as well. But as I said, you know, it's really flipping it on the back and making sure that you have that visibility of what projects are coming up and you invest in time in what the market can offer, but you also carry on with that support in the contract and supplier management. So at this point, I'm gonna hand over to my colleague, Thomas. Great, thank you, Hugh. So I'll take you through the latter part of the webinar here. So the stages of public sector tender process are covered by strict rules to ensure openness, fairness, and transparency. So due to this, the opportunity for market engagement during the tender and post-tender stage is really only briefly touched on in this guidance. It's also due to the fact, as Hugh just pointed out, the earlier the engagement, the likelier it is to yield a positive and more meaningful outcome. But public bodies can still potentially hold open briefings at this stage to clarify needs and requirements with suppliers who are interested in submitting a response or those who have been shortlisted. So when developing your tenders, there are several things you can do to support the local economy and further sustainability goals. So you can widely advertise contracts over 25,000 pounds in value to encourage local businesses per to participate. So for example, using local media channels alongside the Sell to Wales portal. You could explore how lotting elements of larger bids could support SMEs alongside supporting your sustainability and low carbon objectives. Ensure that the tender can also enable bids from small businesses by, for example, making clear that permissible bids may include collaborative or consortia solutions. And then use the supplier feedback as an opportunity to obtain suggestions to improve your procurement processes, especially when engaging with SMEs. Uh, and this is also, you can use this as an opportunity to remind all suppliers that going beyond any sustainability requirements and specifications within their bid is always encouraged and welcome. So in the world of public sector procurement, I think market engagement can be seen as either a luxury or an inconvenience. And so typically when value for money is the focus of any requirement, uh, procurement and commissioning teams are unable to build time into the procurement cycle to undertake market engagement activity. And then added to this, there's kind of a lack of clarity on the compliance of undertaking market engagement, and that can lead to missed opportunities to deliver sustainable benefits. So oftentimes public procurers don't want to undertake market engagement for fear of running afoul of the openness, fairness, and transparency rules. And while risks do exist when carrying out these market engagement activities, these are manageable if the engagement process is planned and well run. So to manage these risks, you need to be ensure that you are open, fair, and transparent to all suppliers. And you can do this by planning in advance and sharing with the market how you plan to engage with them. Make sure you treat all suppliers the same and ensure that all have equal access to information and receive the same information. Treat any supplier data you receive with respect Remain open to suggestions and innovations and remain impartial. And it's really important, don't allow one supplier or one solution to define your entire procurement. 
So successful market engagement can help your organization deliver on sustainability goals, save money, and support the local economy. And to assist you, the guide includes the following suggestions on overcoming some common barriers when undertaking market engagement. So you can use this engagement to present a challenge to suppliers and to seek solutions. So market engagement can create supply networking opportunities and enable new supplier relationships to develop. And you can encourage new entrants into the market by holding local supplier engagement or bidder training days. To help create these new markets, you need to be open to working alongside or jointly with other local public bodies to share vision for sustainable outcomes or innovation and to deliver on a shared goal to the market. So it's important to include these sustainable outcomes and ensure that you're using market engagement to maximize your sustainable potential. And to help you with this, you can carry out an analysis of your organizational spin to recognize where the greatest opportunity and influence sits. This is actually something that Rapcomry can assist your organization with. You, can, you need to determine your key organizational goals and ensure that these are well communicated with the market. And within tenders, it's important to use outcome-focused language, such as reduction in waste or reduction in emissions. And this will help suppliers achieve and then also help you measure the impact. And then finally, most importantly, build in the time for market engagement. So maintain and publish a contract register and forward contract plan to give your organization in the market expected timelines. Work with internal service areas to identify and manage project pipelines, and then use that forward plan to build in the appropriate time to undertake market engagement relevant to your project. So to underline some of the key principles within the guide, um, there are several case studies contained throughout, including this case study from last year on how market engagement delivered an innovative solution for Welsh schools. So in November 2021, a Welsh government grant of six million pounds for school musical instruments was announced. Uh, the WLGA and the Welsh Government Commercial Directorate worked collaboratively to identify opportunities for Welsh businesses and social enterprises. So through pre-market engagement, the WLGA and WGCD discovered an opportunity to establish a Welsh sheltered workshop hub to assemble instruments for use in schools by beginners. So there wasn't any other existing sheltered workshop doing this work across Wales or the United Kingdom. So engagement with the Wales Cooperative Center identified potential Welsh sheltered workshops who could undertake the work leading to the idea of a consortia approach. So through this approach, a significant quantity of UK made instruments will be sourced in Welsh schools as opposed to sourced from abroad. And the refurbishment of repair of instruments in Wales will also create new jobs and opportunities and help those with disabilities back into the workforce. So alongside the main guidance that Hugh and I have just taken you through, um, we've also developed these five category specific brief documents on how best to engage with different sectors. So on screen here, you can see we have the food and catering sector guide, but alongside that, we also have textiles, IT equipment, construction, and furniture. So now we're going to take you through the food and catering guidance to give you an idea of how each is structured and how they can be used by your procurement teams. So each sector guide includes a specific sustainable procurement hierarchy for the relevant category. Uh, you may already be familiar with the sustainable procurement hierarchy and you can find the full hierarchy guidance on our website. But in general, procurement decision-making should follow the hierarchy from top to bottom. So for example, on food and catering, we start at the top, so avoiding or reducing the need. So reducing food waste is critical through careful planning and avoiding wasteful purchasing. Reducing the food miles by trying to source as locally as possible should also be a key consideration. And then at this stage, reconsider the purchase of any catering item to see if the need can be met another way, and especially the catering items that are single use. Moving down the hierarchy, reusing and extending food shelf life should be the next consideration. So trying to buy food that will last or food that can be repurposed or redistributed, redistributed if it does end up being surplus. And then at this stage, if other catering products are necessary, such as plates or cutlery, explore renting or leasing options, and but most importantly, ensure that they're not single use and that they can be used numerous times over the product's lifetime. Moving down again to buying sustainably. So buying sustainable food includes looking for produce that is seasonal and organic, 
or other foodstuffs that is produced in an ethical way. And again, buying locally comes in here as you're reducing the impact of the transportation while also supporting the foundational economy. This is also where you should consider trying to avoid buying products with single-use plastics, buying catering products with the most sustainable and ethical supply chains. And then finally, on recovery and disposal, at the very least, try to ensure that food waste is composted or sent to other segregated food waste streams. And actually specific within this guidance, we actually have a further hierarchy specifically on what to do with food waste for catering teams that was actually developed by RAPS food waste team. So that's included in the food guidance. And then in each of these sector guides, um, after the sector specific procurement hierarchy, our technical specialists have put together a market readiness summary. So this outlines key sustainability capabilities you may want to engage the sector on. So for instance, here on food, you can see that the market has a high capability when it comes to the supply of seasonal food produce but it has quite a limited capability on delivering any support or supporting packaging take back schemes. So this isn't to say it's not worth engaging with suppliers uh, where there may be lower capabilities, but as, as the more purchasers ask for and demand these sustainable solutions within the supply chain, the more likely the suppliers are to deliver on them. And then finally, each guide contains specific suggestions relating back to some of the key concepts discussed in the main guidance documents. So a few examples here on screen include hosting a market dialogue and innovation event with suppliers to seek more sustainable solutions to preventing food waste or avoiding single use plastics. Or you can use a prior information notice or a pin to let suppliers know you'll be seeking more information on transport emissions or sharing expectations with them on packaging materials. And then specifically on food, again, we've linked back to free wrap resources around food waste and packaging that have been developed specifically for catering. But regardless of the sector, using the tools outlined in these guides should help your organization work with suppliers to deliver more sustainable outcomes. So thank you very much for your time. I'll now be handing back to Pauline to wrap up the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And thank you, Hugh. Uh, so as uh, as Thomas has alluded to and, and Hugh, this early market engagement guidance is just one of a suite of sustainable procurement guidance uh, that's available on our website. Uh, this programme of work is funded by Welsh Government and we're funded to provide advice, guidance and tools to help Wales's public sector to embed sustainable procurement in policy and practice and identify opportunities to support the development of a circular economy here in Wales. We can provide strategic support for policy development and planning. We can offer a sustainable procurement capability review, which can help identify actions for improvement and we can support with those actions. We can also supply um, support on individual procurement exercises at planning stage and engaging with suppliers to assess market capacity for more sustainable um, solutions through to tender development, evaluation, contract management and monitoring. We also provide support across sectors or categories of spend where there's a particular knowledge gap or a barrier. So I hope you found this useful. Please do feel free to get in touch with us, um, with either of us or all of us, um, if there's anything that we can help you with. Like I say, all the guidance is available on our website together with case studies. Um, please let us know also if you've got any feedback on this morning's webinar. So thank you very much for your time. Diolch am eich amser. Bada.